this is Wendy Barlow from Cohen Tucker and Adis. Today I'm going to talk to you about the new court's new immigration court's new ECAS system or electronic filing system. So ECAS was recently enacted in all the immigration courts. It was a slow rollout, so it started in some courts, but now is available in all immigration courts nationwide. This is great because for years, immigration has been extremely paper-based. You might be able to see behind me a few files um, that are immigration court for cases, so you can see how big those get. Um, but for years, we have been filing in paper. We also used to have to serve copies to the government by paper too. More recently, the government has had an e-filing system, which we've been trying to take advantage of. Uh, we serve everything that we are, have to on the government via e-serve, um, and that reduces the amount of paper we use. Our also office also tries to keep digital copies for ourselves, and the attorneys um, during hearings just download everything to a laptop and take it with them, again, minimizing the amount of paper we ultimately use. Um, now, with the courts going to an electronic case filing system, um, it's going to be even better. Um, we'll be able to upload things and, again, eliminate one, you know, another package of paper. Um, one of the nice things about the system is it will allow you to get case information. So uh, information about like the immigration judge assigned, when a notice to appear was issued, the case, current case status, any upcoming hearings. You can also get copies of any papers filed as, that are part of the record of proceedings or the ROP. So that's things like, um, again, the notice to appear, um, motions to change venue, motions to terminate, any evidence submissions by either DHS or um, you yourself or through your attorney. Um, these will all be available as well as immigration judge orders. Now the big problem is, is that not every case can use the electronic filing system. Um, they still have cases that um, are not completely digital yet. So what happens is, is if you log on to your case on the uh, immigration courts website, it will indicate whether it is a paper ROP or record of proceeding, or if it doesn't say that, you're able to do e-filing. You can still do things via paper if you're not you don't have the technological ability to do e-filing at this time. They haven't strictly made it e-filing, but that may come in the future. So I've already used this eCast um, system in a few cases. I've been using eCast for a while in the sense of being able to get case information, looking at my calendar with the court, things of that nature, but I've actually started filing in cases where it is allowed and it is very convenient. Um, you can file your submissions directly with the court. You know they've been received. You get confirmation. There's no worrying about will the post office or the FedEx or UPS deliver on time. Um, it's pretty much the day you upload is submitted to the court and you have proof of that filing. We're also seeing that things for such as motions to change venue, we are getting much faster decisions from the court not only in the sense of um, they're delivered as pretty much as soon as the decision is made and uploaded, but the court itself is making decisions faster because they're getting the documentation faster. The records are available online, so they don't need a good old fashioned paper file to review. Um, so this has been a positive um, step forward. Um, it is available to attorneys and accredited representatives uh, individual respondents will also be able to create accounts and use this service. Um, again, you do need to be careful though. Um, it does, there are some technical aspects. Um, the one nice thing is that the immigration court does have a pretty good um, manual and they are setting up um, courses that you can, video conferences that you can take online to get training in how to use the system. Overall, it's pretty user friendly. Um, and again, like I said, it's making life that much more easy. Um, during the height of the COVID pandemic, the courts had allowed email filing, 
which was also very nice. Um, but now they took that away as the ports reopened. So this new system, we are looking forward to it moving forward and um, being implemented even more so across the courts and with even older cases. The other good thing, um, it's not part of the ECAS system per se, but if you are in removal proceedings, for years you had to dial a phone number 1-800-898-7180 punch in your alien number, go through a whole bunch of prompts to get information about your case. For example, when your next hearing was, whether a judge made a decision on a case, whether you had an appeal pending, um, your brief deadline, things like that. Um, there is actually a system now that you can um, use online and you can get your case status. All you need to know is your alien number and um, you can go to the EOIR's website and put in your alien number and you can get information about your case. Now, it's very limited information. Um, again, that's in part because of privacy concerns, but if you do put in an A number, you will get like, it'll you'll see your name so you can verify your name. Um, you will see which judge is assigned to your case if a judge has been assigned. When your next hearing is, if there is a hearing, if the case is pending or not, um, that will all be indicated. But again, there's not personal information such as your address or your phone number or the ability to access documents. This is very limited, but it does save you from having to dial a phone number and go through a whole bunch of prompts. Um, it also lets you know on that same website where you go, the a direct link to any courts that are closed so if you do have an upcoming hearing and you're wondering, the weather was really bad in Omaha today, do we have court today? You can check and see the operational status. Um, so that is some newer tech updates that have come about um, recently and will be expanded upon. Uh, we believe um, early next year, pretty much everything will be e-filing. But again, as the court makes announcements, we will let you know. Um, if you are able to take advantage of e-filing, it is great. Um, it, it does save time and money um, and does make things take, at least when it comes to decisions on motions, it seems to be making them come faster. Um, the other updates that we wanted to talk to you about today is just some general updates about USCIS and their current processing times. Um, with immigration, uh, with COVID, there were a lot of delays um, due to closures of offices, even when offices were reopened, limited staffing, um, staff being out. We are seeing USCIS processing times kind of hit a plateau um, and actually start to decrease. Um, so that is a positive step forward. Uh, more and more interviews are being scheduled. Um, and that's allowing people to finish their cases, whether it's get a green card, get their 10 year green card, get citizenship, those cases are moving forward. Another thing, and this is happening in the New York area, um, it may be happening in other areas, is USCIS is actually scheduling interviews on Saturday. If you get a notice and your interview is scheduled for a Saturday, that is not a mistake, it is not a joke. <laughs> um, USCIS is conducting interviews primarily for naturalization on Saturdays right now. So if you do get an interview, that is an actual interview date and you should appear as scheduled. If you do not appear, your case can be denied due to abandonment and you'll either have to try to reopen it or start all over again. So please make sure you're showing up if you're scheduled for a Saturday interview. If you cannot attend a Saturday interview due to um, other commitments or uh, religious observations, you just have to let USCIS know and they will reschedule the interview. Um, I just wanted to warn people because we have heard um, or seen online that people are thinking that this was a mistake or it's not real. It is 100% real and they are doing interviews. And like I said, at least at the New York field office, I can verify that. I have actually attended um, a Saturday interview and I have seen interviews being scheduled and on Saturdays 
it is something that is happening. Um, that is all for today. If I don't speak to you again, I wish everyone a happy holidays and a happy new year. And if you have any questions about anything we talked about today or other immigration matters, please give us a call at 212-840-0050. Thank you. Have a good day.